Greetings folks, in this video I'm going to show the basic setup for the Parasirius Air 3 flight control board for a multi wee copter uh, and INAV on my old Bixler. Now this, I have literally only just got this set up to work uh, and I, I'm by no means an expert in this sort of stuff. I really, this is the first time I've ever used uh, INAV uh, and flight control boards really and things like that. So this is really just how to get this stuff working without going into the, the finer details about PIF or PID tuning, which I basically know nothing about at this stage. Just the connections, just the setting up INAV and the, the basic selections that you need to make to get it working on a Bixler. It's certainly not an optimal setup. It's, this has just got crappy old servos. Uh, for best performance, you really need fast digital servos. Uh, to get super smooth performance. But I'm just learning this stuff, so I thought I'd pass on what I've learnt as a beginner, basically. Now, to get to this stage, I looked at the uh, INAV wiki, which is the best resource of information on how to get the INAV working. Uh, Matthew Ogborn's beautiful series on setting up flight control boards in INAV. Painless 360's excellent series as well. Uh, I've watched all of those videos about how to set it up and I've spoken to uh, Q from MultiWee Copter who's been extremely helpful helping me. So I thoroughly recommend you have a look at some of that stuff first uh, and a lot of it probably won't make any sense until you actually play with it uh, and so that's the stage that I'm at. Now before I even mounted the uh, flight control board on the Bixler to get my head around how it work, works I made up this little test plane never meant to fly, it just has uh, servos, control surfaces and a little motor on the front here. And the reason being I could sit beside my computer, uh, plug the flight controller board in and out uh, and easily muck around with servo directions and throws and see that it was actually working. This helped me a lot, just sitting at my desk to try and nut things out. I strongly recommend doing that, it's um, quite fun and quite easy. I'll just explain a little bit about what a flight control board does. Standard RC usually relies on a transmitter talking to a receiver which operates a servo. That's sort of the basic concept of radio control. When you're using a flight control board it sits in between the receiver and the servo and interprets the signals that you've sent to the receiver uh, according to what mode you've selected in the flight control board. And it could be a stabilised mode where it uh, smooths out the flight of the plane. It will still react to your sticks in some modes. In other modes it will totally ignore whatever you do with the radio and just fly its own, make up its own mind I guess. It can smooth out any outside influences like gusts of wind and keep the plane flying straight and level. In a GPS mode you can get it to return to home automatically and you can e even get it to fly uh, missions with sort of pre entered waypoints along the way. Great for aerial mapping. All right, well, let's have a closer look at the Paris Sirius Air 3 flight control board itself. This side, which is sort of the back of the board, there's a little USB port for connecting to your computer or laptop and configuring using iNav configurator. Over this side, we have the GPS connection. And over this side, we have the inputs and outputs. So. This bottom row here is where you connect the receiver into the flight control board. This is a S-Bus connection. You can get different plugs for PPM and PWM, but yeah, we're using S-Bus at the moment. And S-Bus is good because we get all 16 channels passed through to the flight control board. If you're using PWM, you'll only get six channels, I think. Don't know about PPM. And this top set of pins here are the outputs or these connect to the servo and the motor. So we have Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, M5 and M6. Top row all the way along of the signal, bottom row is the ground, but only the first four share the power pin. All share the power pin, so if you connect an ESC onto Q1, that will power those first four pins. Q2 is for a second motor, um, I'm only using single motor, so that'll stay spare. So I can plug servos into Q3 and Q4 and they will operate okay. 
if I plug servos into M5 and M6, they won't be powered, so I have to provide power some other way, either from a separate uh, BEC or a, a Y lead connecting the power from these other, other pins here. What I actually did was uh, separate the power lead, or the, actually separate the signal lead from every servo and uh, sort of just plug in the signal leads and powered them all separately from a, a separate BEC, which is probably the safest way to do it. Anyway, so the first mistake I made was assuming that all of these would be, be could drive the servos and uh, I think it was the one of the ailerons and the elevator wouldn't work because they didn't have power on those two pins. So the designer decided that uh, it was more useful to use these two pins as on-screen display pins. So you can plug in an external on-screen display using these two pins. Uh, now the good thing about this thing is that it comes with all the connectors connected, all the compass as well, all the easy connections in a, a gel damped mount board it's all done for you it's pre-configured with fixed wing configuration so it takes care of a lot of the initial setup uh, you're going to need a micro usb plug plug it into a port on your computer plug the usb cable in the right way that's the right way there we go so you get some flashing lights here so now i'm going to open up chrome and go to apps and i already have the inav configurator downloaded and included as one of the Chrome apps. Now you can create a shortcut, put it in your applications folder and have sort of instant access to the iNav configurator. Here it is down here. So I'll start that up. Opens Chrome, opens the configurator. Now something you might have to do first is download a driver to uh, enable the connection. Uh, different on the PC you need to enable the right COM port or something like that. With the Mac, you need to download this uh, Silicon Labs driver and then it'll connect reasonably well, I think. It seems to work for me anyway. Now, since this is pre-configured, I don't have to flash the firmware or anything like that. It's already uh, up to date and pre-configured, so I can click Connect. And there we are. You'll see the little diagram on there showing that it's connected and working. You wiggle the flight control board and you'll see corresponding movements on the screen. There we go, that's the normal look. All right, so that's a good start. Shows that you're actually connected and we're off to a good start. Whatever you do, do not hit reset settings. That will wipe every pre-configured configuration from the board and you'll be back to a, a bare iNav now before we do anything else, I would scroll down to command line interface, type in dump down the bottom here, hit return, and that will load all your settings into the command line interface. And to back up the settings, you need to copy this, apart from that first line, paste it into a text file, and save that as something that you will remember. Default Air 3 config will do me. Save that. Now you've backed up all the original settings. If you don't do that, you're an idiot. I'll come and confiscate the board from you because this is the first thing you need to do to make sure you don't stuff everything up. If you start mucking around with settings and stop it from working, you can always copy this from the text file, paste it back into this command line interface and hit return and you'll be back to the default settings. That's how you back up your flight control board. You must do that.